So if you ever ask yourself the question, how do you get things to pick stuff up in Blender? If you're animating a character, you want to pick up a ball or pick up a cup or pick up something. How do you do it? This is how you do it. Let's go. And yeah, if you want to find out how to make this robot arm and rig it and get it all set up and texture it, go over to Patreon or join on YouTube. The uncut tutorial is available both uh, uh, both platforms so you can get it at either place if you want to find out how I did all that. If you want to get this project file with this cool rigged arm, go over to Patreon, join at the second tier and up and you'll get this project file if you join this month. So it's a limited time offer. Join this month, you get this project file. So I've got my robot hand animation. He reaches down, picks up the ball, but he's not picking up the ball. This is the ball. So we need to figure out the ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to decide which part of the rig do we want to constrain the ball to when we do the pickup. Because the idea behind this is use a constraint to constrain an object to something else in the scene. And specifically, we want to pick one of the bones. Now, I don't want to constrain it to the finger, right? Because if he picks it up and then he moves his finger, the ball's going to like stick to his finger, right? I want him to be sticking to the palm. So the first thing I need to do is come to my rig, go into pose mode, select the hand, and find out what the name of that bone is. Now you can see here it's called bone. Very original name, very clear rig, well named. Um, anyways, so that's what we're going to want to parent this to. So I'm going to go back over to object mode and I'm going to select my ball and I'm going to come down to the constraints tab and I'm going to click this and get this drop down menu and I'm going to add a child of constraint and that is the magic constraint that you need to pick things up with in Blender. So the target, what's that? Well, it's going to be the armature. So we're going to pick this armature. You notice here, any of these bones give me the same result. Result, They're all robot hand, the name of my, my armature. So I just select that first and it'll put the robot hand armature, but then it'll get this new option here called bone and it detects that this is an armature that I've selected. So it knows that I need to pick a specific bone. So in this list, I need to find the bone. You can see how well named these bones are. Um, I'm gonna pick bone there. Now what's happened? It's just moved. Why did it move? We'll see what happens. If I scrub through my timeline, you can see that it's following the hand and it's moving around, but it's just not in the right place. It's it's way off. Everything's incorrect. Well, what I need to do is click this button here, set inverse. And what's going on is basically this ball is parented and constrained to the, the position of the hand, right? And the position of the hand has animation on it. So it's kind of looking back to what like the rest pose of that that hand is, and it's moving this thing to that position, right? So it's taking its, you know, transforms, which are pretty small, 1.2, negative 3, negative 1. So it's it's moved off a little bit, right, from the origin of the scene. And that's what these values represent, where it is in 3D space. But when you make it a child of something else, the origin becomes the original position of the bone that you're parenting to. So it goes to that sort of same offset, 1.2, negative 3, 1 point, negative 1.4 here, um, does that offset from that bone. And that might be way back somewhere else in your scene, especially if you've animated your character way off of your base rig. But that's all right, because there's an extra button here designed specifically for this task. It's called set inverse. And what this does is it takes the position of the object that you're, you know, making a child, making it a child, and takes the original position of that. It looks at the position of the bone that you're parenting it to, and it does an inverse of the two. It's using matrix math, creates an inverse matrix, but it's a, a number basically that Blender can use to move it back to where it needs to go. So if I click this, set inverse, it's going to jump back to the original source position, and now it will be where I want it to be, right? So if I animate this, you can see it's sticking with the hand and it's lined up in the way that I want it to be, which is great. So I've just cleared off the child of constraint again. So let's do this another way. So we're going to come over here. We're going to actually find the exact frame where we want the hand to begin controlling the ball. Okay, because that's the point at which the position of this ball needs to start changing. That's really important. Find that moment. So let's see, it kind of rests down here. And I think this is the point at which it feels like the ball lines up nicely with the hand. So frame 13 is what I'm going to want to use. So I'm going to go to frame 13 and I'll use this frame. I'll come over here, child of, again, grab the armature. Again, grab the bone. Again, he's going to jump off and I'm going to click set inverse, which will bring him back to where I want him. And this is the position from which the animation can play out from frame 13. You can see it stays nicely resting in the palm just as we've posed it. All right. So what do I want to do about these previous frames, right? Because now he's sticking with it. Well, if we go to frame 13, the one that we wanted, we can come here and we can set a key for the influence. So I'm going to hit I over this channel box to set a key for that moment. And then I'll go back one frame and I'll set this influence to zero and hit another and hit I to set another key there. So now this constraint has no influence over this ball whatsoever until we get to that frame. And that's the moment that this thing starts to have 
influence. Now, it's going to be the same if it was to hand this ball to someone else. I would get to the frame where the hands meet. I would line up everything. I would animate the influence off. And in that particular case, what you're going to happen is when you animate the influence off. So if I show you, if we go up here, if I animate the influence off, you can see the ball is going to drop back down into that position. And that's pretty tricky, right? For, you know, if you want to do some kind of handover uh, with this. But what you can do is we can set a key right here. So influence here. I can go forward one frame and I can set my influence to zero. So what I'll do is I'll come to the first frame where we pick up the ball because this is the position that I like it to being in, be in here. Um, and I'm going to hit I and set a location rotation keyframe for that guy. And then we come up here and we do the pickup. What I'm going to do is right here where I've animated the influence to zero and he drops down. I'm going to set a key right here. So for his location and rotation, um, and I'm going to take that key. I'll just open this up. So I'll take these location rotation keys. I'm just going to move them back one frame just so I don't overwrite them because while it's in this position, I'm also going to hit I and I'm going to do a visual location rotation. This will set the location and rotation for your object, creates a key for that object wherever it appears to be at that moment. So now what I can do is I can take those guys and the ones that we set just previously, and I can move them all forward one frame. So basically we've got a key that sets its position, keeps it where it is in relation to this child of constraint. But then when we turn it off, you can see he no longer drops down to the ground because we've set this new key here, which sets a new position. So we're actually kind of over one frame moving from there to there uh, to get it into the right spot. And now if the hand is animated away over here, you know, go to pose mode, you know, I can animate the hand, move it away, whatever, and the ball is going to stay right up there like that. That's how you can then hand it to somebody else. You could have another constraint, another child of constraint on this same ball. So you can stack a bunch of these in the hierarchy to so get 20 or 30 of them. You're passing it all over the place and you just keep setting those visual transforms, animating the influence off and then animating the influence onto the new one and move it along that way and set your inverses each time. And remember, just keep going to the frame where you want it to be controlled by the next object. And that's where you want to set things up for your child of constraint for each time down the chain. Hope that makes sense. And I hope you have a lot of fun getting things to pick up things in Blender. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon, everyone who's a member over on YouTube. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later.